Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today for the um, AMPAC Business Capital and American Business Bank um, Grant and Education Training Webinar. We are excited about all of you who have uh, voiced an interest in participating in the grant and also for all of you who are on the line to participate in this education training. We firmly believe that the great value of this participation in this grant is not only uh, receiving the grant, which is limited and competitive, but the opportunity to get the education that's made available because of the generosity of American Business Bank. So again, thank you so much for being here. We're gonna share a few ground rules about the presentation. We see a lot of people making comments in the chat and we'd like to encourage you to uh, really use the Q&A feature. So you're registered in order to, um, to join. So if you could just feel free to rename yourself on your screen, your registration will still be counted. So you don't need to exit or rejoin. Just make sure that your name is listed in, uh, properly on the, um, as it is on the registration on your screen. And looking at the chat and Q&A features, the chat feature during this, during this webinar um, is on, but we do not need for you to use the chat to document that you are here. We have all of your registrations, so you do not need to say hello or put information in the chat. We have that information in your registration. If you have a question, we'd like to encourage you to use the Q&A feature to ask questions pertaining to the webinar topics, or if you have questions about the grant application, do that in the Q&A feature, and we will answer those either live or via the Q&A. So use the Q&A feature for questions. No need to put any information in the chat that documents that you're here. We have that information. The recording of today's session will be available on AMPAC's YouTube channel, and you'll get a link to that YouTube channel after this session. If you have specific questions after the webinar or you need to get additional information, you can email info at ampac.com but we want to encourage you because of the volume of questions we're getting, use the website and the, and the information that we're going to send to you after this webinar, frequently ask questions. Most of your questions should be answered in the frequently asked questions. And we ask when you put when you send an email to info at ampac.com, make sure in the subject line, you put your business name and ABB grant application so that we can try and surface that to the top. Again, because of the number of um, applicants in this competitive and limited fund grant process, be patient as we try and respond to the question, and please use the tools that we've provided on the website through the frequently asked questions to make sure that you can get your answer so that you can continue uh, completing your application and get that submitted. We are going to be doing a poll uh, on this webinar and when we do the poll, once the host launches the poll, it's at that time that you, you should take the poll. It'll be up for a limited amount of time. If you don't get to answer it in that limited amount of time, don't, don't worry about that. We will still get your information, but just uh, know that that poll will be up for a limited amount of time and we'll cue when that poll is going to be launched. So again, thank you so much for calling. I'm Hilda Kennedy. I'm founder and president of Ampac Business Capital. And we're absolutely delighted that you have joined today for this education 
critical education and training opportunity and for your interest in participating in the ABD grant. And we're delighted to have this partnership. You should know that all the information is on our website. We are collecting applications because of the uh, excitement around the grant application. We were collecting, we collected applications for those from uh, September 15th through the 20th and, and or you participated on the webinar on September 23rd. Your grant application has to be complete with all of the information that's requested. Plus, you have to have attended at least two of the three sessions that we're offering for the grant application and for this competition. We recognize that the funds are limited and not everyone will be able to receive a grant, but we're so excited about this educational and training opportunity provided by ABB that we know will bring value to everyone who has participated. So with that, if I could have the next slide, let me tell you about the agenda for today. So I've already provided the welcome today. We are so delighted to have um, Bruce from American Business Bank on the line to talk about um, American Business Bank and their commitment to this air effort. We'll also introduce members of the AMPAC team who will talk a little bit more about AMPAC Business Capital and the programs that we offer. And then your training will be provided by Omar from American Business Bank planning for your growth. Um, or uh, and record keeping is what will be the focus of today. So with that, I will turn it over to Bruce to tell you a little bit more about American Business Bank and their commitment to this effort. Thank you so much. Well, good afternoon and thank you for uh, letting me be here. Um, clearly I need to update my uh, picture there in a couple of years. Um, so let me say, first of all, I'm Bruce Gumbiner. I am a senior vice president, risk manager, and CRA officer for American Business Bank. I'd like to say that AIM, um, American Business Bank is honored to be part of this program and to be able to sponsor some of this. As a community bank, we're committed to supporting our community um, and, and where and the, the areas that we actually come to and work in. 22 years ago, our, our bank was started. And it was started by a group of bankers that, were, that felt the entrepreneurial spirit themselves. They had become part of a bigger bank and they didn't want to do that. So they took that entrepreneurial spirit and started American Business Bank. And we've held that value ever since. And as an example of that, we took some of the money that we've earned from the PPP loans and we're returning it back to the community to start this program to support small businesses, minority and, and women-owned small businesses. And we understand the importance of community in supporting these small businesses. And we appreciate you taking part in the program. I wanna thank you for being here and wish you all the best of luck. Thank you. Thank you very much, Bruce. And again, thank you to American Business Bank and your leadership for this incredible commitment to the community and to giving back in this way. Um, on with us today is three members of the AMPAC 25 member team. Uh, and I'm delighted to have Richard Pelle, who's our Senior VP of Community Lending and Brian Kennedy, who's our Entrepreneur Ecosystem Director on along with myself. AMPAC is a 501c3 nonprofit organization, and we're authorized by the US Department of Treasury as a community development financial institution and the US Small Business Administration, um, administering several programs for the US Small Business Administration as a mission-based lender, making us different from a bank that provides more traditional underwriting guidelines, we are able to tweak the underwriting guidelines so that we can serve more small businesses, especially those who are starting and emerging. 
our, we exist to uplift communities, strengthen families, and advance entrepreneurial dreams. And so I'll tell you a little bit about the programs that we offer. On the next slide, you'll see that um, as a small business mission-based lender, we finance businesses from cradle to legacy. And again, from those starting up with businesses to those buying commercial real estate, large commercial real estate, really owner occupied commercial real estate. Next slide. Uh, we do this, um, we do our work in three different areas government backed loans with um, private loan, making private loans for growing businesses from as little as $5,000 to greater than 30 million for our portion of SBA financing for commercial real estate. With our SBA loans, we're a partner of the SBA for micro loans from five to $50,000 for community advantage loans for loans up to $250,000. And again, for the SBA 504 program, that finances and refinances commercial real estate and equipment. And our direct lending programs are provided because we are a community development financial institution. So we do a gamut of small business loans uh, that allows us to serve businesses with working capital and other needs as they start, grow, and uh, thrive. We did over $18 million in PPP lending with an average loan size of uh, $18,000, really focusing on the smaller businesses, um, Schedule C businesses, trying to make sure that those dollars got in the hands of those businesses to get through the emergency. And now we're laser focused on helping those businesses to recover. Next slide. Um, in addition to our direct lending programs, we partner and do direct training with small businesses. So business advising, trying to help businesses with best fit lending partners and loan programs. Sometimes um, businesses don't have a strong banking relationship. And as a nonprofit mission-based lender, we work with a number of different lenders, credit unions, non-bank lenders, so we can help businesses find the best fit lending partner based on their industry, based on their maturity, based on different aspects of the growth of the business. These training programs that we provide quarterly and, and more regularly because we can do that via webinar, uh, and we do that in partnership with a lot of nonprofit organizations that also serve small businesses. And then, of course, I've talked about our direct loan programs. As a result of the pandemic, we have launched and are launching um, our entrepreneur ecosystem. So on the next slide, I'm going to turn it over to Brian to talk a little bit about that. Thank you, Hilda, and welcome everyone. We're grateful to have you. So our entrepreneur ecosystem really is your business resource hub. Once our business does open for our grand opening on November 5th, you'll have access to physical space. But in the interim, please feel free to visit our digital home on your local app store, whether you be iPhone or Android, download our app and book your business coach, book your business community mentor, we want to make sure that you have access to the tools to really grow your business. Thank you. And we would love to have you as part of the Impact's Entrepreneur Ecosystem. Thank you, Brian. And it's my pleasure now to uh, turn the presentation over to Omar Morel for the uh, deep dive into what we're going to talk to you about planning for your business growth and record keeping. Omar Morel not only is a um, Senior VP at um, American Business Bank in the SBA um, as an SBA business development officer. But Omar also is the treasurer of the board of directors for Ampac Business Capital. We're really delighted to have him. He has a really strong passion for helping small businesses to grow. And I know you'll see all of that come out um, as he goes through the slides of the presentation. Omar. 
Thank you so much, Elda. And everyone, welcome. Welcome to all of you who are here for the first time and uh, maybe a bigger accomplishment for the, those of you who are returning for the second time. So congratulations for being here. Um, while I do appreciate the promotion, uh, I'm a vice president, not, not a senior vice president, but they, they have seniors somewhere in there. It's, it's all these really silly bank titles. All that really matters is, <laughs> is I know a little something about, about, uh, about SBA lending. Uh, but is that I prophecy? I did it last time. I <laughs> prophesied executive. I prophesied. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> so, um, but I'll go, I've got control here of the, of the slide deck, which is exciting. And we're going to go through the importance of record keeping uh, this week. Um, you know, so, so last time we talked about how, how do we go about planning? This week we're going to be talking about the importance of record keeping and really how important it, it, it really can be to you know towards the um, uh, the success uh, of your of your business. Um, so a few of the the objectives that we're going to go through today, just very kind of high level concept of record keeping, why it's so important, some of the tools that are commonly available to you, um, best practices, some rules that you want to follow identifying the benefits, why it's important for you to, to be able to do that, um, help you help you to start with the basics of, of record keeping, and then even talk about, you know, just in general, some of the, the software that's out there. Um, and then kind of as a bonus, so, so we, this is actually a training from, um, from the FDIC uh, that we're doing, but as a bonus, I, I've got a, I've got a special slide towards the end because I actually went out and I spoke with the CPA and I said, Hey, what, what's kind of the most important takeaways that we wanted, that we want to take for, uh, whether you're a sole proprietorship, um, uh, or a corporation, whether that's uh, an LLC, an S corp or, or a C corp, what, what's kind of the, the, the absolute most important things that we have to remember. So we'll, we're going to include that and get to that, uh, towards, towards the end. So don't, don't, uh, don't drop off on me early today. Um, so what do you know? Like, just like last week, we want to start with, uh, with an understanding of what it is that, what kind of knowledge you're bringing um, uh, to the table for this training. So Brian, if you could launch our poll, we're, we're just going to leave it open for about 30 seconds or so, try to get as many of you to participate as we can, and just get an idea of, of what you know. And that poll's on the other screen for me, so I'm going to bring it over here. All right, so I'm just kind of actually, Brian. I can actually see how many folks have participated. So what we'll do is we'll we'll get to a, a good little chunk of of, of, uh, of of the well over 500 of you that are on on the <laughs> on the the webinar today, and um, we will we will go from there. So so I'm seeing some great answers. I love it. This is fantastic. So we'll just give you just a. Let's say about 20 seconds more, and we'll, we'll, we should have a good little uh, feel for uh, where everyone is today, right? And this is also going to help me as I'm going through the presentation, make sure that I, I kind of highlight on certain, uh, certain items. So, all right. So last 10 seconds, get your answers in quickly. Uh, if you don't get to all of them, that's okay. And um, we're going to end the poll now. All right. Oh, and I can even share the results. This is great. Okay, so let's share the results there. Hopefully you're seeing those. So first question is just, can you explain the basic concept of record keeping, why it's important, you know, uh, uh, that sort of thing. Looks like most of you agree, so, so that's great. So, so it sounds like we're gonna breeze through some of the basics here uh, today. Um, can we identify best practices, tools that are commonly available? Again, good chunk of you agree, not as strong as, as the previous one though. So uh, we'll make sure that we spend just a little bit extra time there. Um, explain rules and tools work. So, so some of you are going to really benefit from that last slide that I talked about, and we'll, we'll spend a little bit more there. But again, in general, it looks like we have a pretty good uh, understanding in the crowd. Uh, benefits, I, I, you know, I'm sure we'll, we'll talk about some compliance issues, some regulatory stuff again today. So great. Uh, good to know that, that uh, we've got a pretty good participation rate there. Uh, number five, uh, explain um, record keeping basics for a small business. Okay, a lot of you agree. So we'll, we'll see how, how, how uh, that last slide that I pre present to you, how that measures up with your understanding. And then some of the software that's available for record keeping. Good, so we'll, we'll spend a little bit more time actually, you know, just kind of talking about some of that stuff as well. And uh, when we get to that, uh, to that point. All right, so let's jump 
right in. So, all right. So, let me, I'm just going to clear my screen here. Uh oh, the dog got excited. <laughs> um, so, introduction. So, record keeping, again, we, we talked about this at the end. We're going to go into a little bit more detail on why it's important for any small business, whether you're a sole proprietor, and that means that you are the business and the business is you, or whether you're a partnership and that has its own. Uh, a set of rules where, where you're coming together with other folks. Um, you're not, you're, you're not, uh, it's very similar to sole prop in that, in that you are, you as individuals are, are the business, but maybe there's a different structure there, or a lot of you are, are a corporation. I'm going to guess that the majority of you are going to fall into either the first bucket or the third bucket. Usually partnerships are a little bit of a, of a they, they, they kind of have a special use. And if your advisors advise you to go that route, then um, then that's probably the right case, but it's likely there's a few less of you that are partnerships on this call. Okay, so what is record keeping? And really what we're talking about is it's the orderly collection and organization of all the records, all of the items that go into your business being what your business is. Um, you know, it's kind of the, the way I think of it. I shared last week that we have a, you know, we have a very young three month old uh, baby uh, in the house that's it's really exciting and and I, I'm, we're lucky she's a good sleeper. So that's been, she, I, you know, she just changes every day. All, those of you that are parents, I'm sure you, you can recognize kind of the, the moment of that, that I'm in in that journey. Um, but, you know, when, when I talk about, when I think about her, you know, what are those important documents, right? It's things like the birth certificate. It's things like the, you know, the medical records that go into, in, into her. It's the, the social security card. Um, it's, the, it's the passport, right? We have, if we wanna travel, we need a passport. So as an individual, we're pretty good because it's, it's, uh, we're kind of raised up from birth to make sure that we are keeping track of those really important documents uh, that, that go into um, you know, what we are. And then by the time we become adults and we start working and we start uh, getting our, you know, our W-2s at the end of the year or 1099s or whatever the case may be so that we can file, do things like file taxes and, and so on and so forth. Well, the same concept applies to your business. And the most important thing, whether you are uh, using something that is as simple as a manila folder or all the way as something super complex, the important thing is it's something that you're actually going to use because whether it's um, tracking your actual business operations, uh, whether it's all of the contracts that you may have signed, your lease agreement, your licenses, your permits, uh, payroll, right? We, you know, now you're actually kind of taking responsibility for providing documents to someone else, uh, whether it's filing for your taxes, the important thing is that you're actually going to use uh, use whatever system it is that you come up with. And again, it could be as simple as, as, a, as a folder, you're printing documents out and you're, you're, you're filing the way in a manila folder and you know, by date or, or by name or, or contract number or whatever the case may be, uh, or it's something really complex, like one of these online services, you know, whether it's QuickBooks, whether it's um, you know, Salesforce has, has record keeping, whether it's Dropbox or, or ShareFile, uh, the important thing is that it's something that you're going to use and it's something that you're going to be able to work your way through uh, because because above all else, if you don't use it, um, you know, then then it's really not going to serve uh, serve the purpose for you. So what, when I mentioned, you know, a lot of us are used to thinking about record keeping in the terms of legal and things for taxes. Right. But when we're actually talking about our business operation, those details become really important as well because it helps fuel and facilitate the growth of your business. You want to know who your customers are. And if you're, if you're just kind of having folks come in the door, um, whether you're billing them or not, you, you really don't get a chance to know who your customers are and start to think of a, of a way to better serve them, to provide a better product to them, or to maybe to market and to grow, to say, hey, if my customers look like, you know, kind of in general this, maybe the, maybe I recognize that all of my customers live within a cer certain zip code. Well, maybe I should be marketing in that zip code and not in the zip code next door. Um, but, but tracking that type of information is what helps you make those types of decisions. Um, you know, and ultimately, you know, in management, and that's what all of you are, you're, you're manage, managing your own business. Um, that's really what, what those management decisions should be driven from. 
is that information, but where does that start? It starts with the record keeping. So if we were in person, we would go through, um, uh, go through this, this slide a little bit more in detail. But what I'm just gonna ask you is just to think about, you know, before we go any further, just think about, okay, what, you know, what are the, the records I'm already keeping? What, what records should I be keeping? Maybe there's some things that I'm not doing a very good job of. You know, maybe there's some things that, um, that every year when I go to uh, file my taxes, um, you know, I show up with the shoebox and my CPA says, oh, no, it's you again, right? And maybe I'm not getting the best advice from, from those folks. So what are the, some of the things that, that you should be doing a better job of, of keeping? And, and maybe jot down, uh, if you have your participant guide, it's on page eight, there's a place for you to write these notes down. And if not, you know, I'm, I, hopefully you have something to write with and a, a notepad, just write down some of, the, some of those items. Say, hey, you know what, number one, let's congratulate ourselves for what we are doing, and then start thinking about what are the things that we need to do a little bit better job of, okay? All right, so we started to keep the records. We kind of know the importance of why we should keep the records. Well, how long should we keep them, right? Because that's where things become, you know, start to start to become important. So I'm going to point you to. So, so if you don't have your participant guide, uh, write down a note, page eight, right? So just make sure you're going to go to page eight because this chart is there, and it actually helps to helps you to remember how long should I be keeping these different items, right? Personnel files, right? You know, all those HR type records, okay? Some of you may be outsourcing your HR and they're doing that for you, but whether it's you or whether it's somewhere else, in general, the recommendation is you, you should be keeping that sort of thing for three years. So three years after, after you don't need it anymore or, or, it's, or it's expired. Um, things like contracts, right? You signed a contract, your lease agreement, you signed a contract with a vendor to purchase, uh, purchase a product, uh, you signed a contract with a uh, maybe with an advisor, maybe, you know, maybe with a, a lawyer or something along those lines, you want to make sure you're keeping that stuff for at least four years. Um, and then there's some items that you should be keeping forever, right? For some of you that have, uh, whether you have your own retirement plan or whether your, your business has matured a little bit more to uh, the point where you're providing a retirement plan for your employees, uh, those are the types of records you just never throw away um, because, it, you know, ultimately that's what, um, that's stuff that, that it could creep up on you, right? 20, 30 years down the road, you had no idea something's coming and all of a sudden uh, a former employee of yours is looking for some retirement plan documents, that sort of thing. So that's the type of stuff you'd never throw away, but there's a range as you can see. There's some things that you're going to keep for just a short amount of time and there's some things you're going to keep for a long amount of time. And again, just a reminder, just, you know, circle page eight, you know, and, and those items that are on that list um, uh, that you are, you are keeping or that is relevant to you, make sure that you have a system to be able to keep them for as long as it recommends there. So what are some of the tools that are out there? Uh, and we're going we're gonna to go through all of these uh, in, in just a little bit more detail. But again, it can go from as simple to uh, paper tools like we talked about, all the way up to really fancy cloud computing and apps and all kinds of fun stuff. Okay. So what do we mean by, by, by paper tools? Well, we've all seen these, especially, you know, if, uh, you know, maybe my older millennials to, um, you know, and up, right, kind of, uh, you know, I'm a little bit older than that, right? We all remember, you know, seeing, you know, file folders hanging everywhere. And, it, you know, it feels like it was just yesterday, actually. It probably was maybe just a few years ago where, you know, in fact, if I looked right over there, there's a little tiny uh, two drawer uh, file folder, you know, little hanging file folder deal. Uh, I don't think any, there's any actual files in there at this point because we just don't use that sort of stuff anymore. Um, you know, our stuff's probably in you know some Dropbox or cloud you know cloud system somewhere, right? So things are definitely shifting, but it's a good reminder that you know for for those of us who either maybe are just getting started or aren't comfortable uh, using some of the the newer technology, you know, good old fashioned file folder, hanging folder a cabinet, a lock cabinet, you know, maybe something that's, um, that's fireproof and waterproof is gonna be really important here. Those systems still work. They worked for, you know, gosh, a long time, right? Decades, if not centuries, um, uh, maybe not quite centuries just yet, but, but you, you get the point, uh, they do work. But I will, I will recommend whatever system you use, make sure that it's secure, right? Um, you know, I sadly, 
I have an uncle in uh, New Jersey and we won't get into it, but, but they were flooded as a, as a result of that, that flooding that happened and, and they lost everything. Uh, and, and I was talking with them on the phone and he goes, you wouldn't believe it because we were remodeling the house and I had just bought a brand new safe and we were going to be putting everything into it the very next morning and everything's gone. So that's a reminder. Make sure that we're, you're, if you're going the paper route, that you are doing it in a secure way uh, because you just never know what can happen. All right, a tickler system. So banks use tick tickler systems, okay? At least that's what we call them. But, it, but you can call them whatever you want. And what a tickler system is, is some way of you being reminded to accomplish a task. That could be some, a lot of us have phone apps where we can, you know, phones where you can put a calendar or set a recurring reminder, right? That could be a, um, a Rolodex, right? Remember those old Rolodex deals where every time you get to a certain, uh, a certain record, you're reminded, hey, let's make sure we're, all of these records are caught back up, that we filed them properly and that we've put, put them away. Um, uh, whatever the case may be, create a system for yourself to be reminded to do the regular tasks, those things that happen all the time. And again, there's some examples here, whether it's paying your estimated quarterly taxes, whether it's renewing your licenses. So a lot of you are professionals, maybe have professional licensure, make sure you're reviewing those, uh, make sure you're paying your bills on time. Um, callbacks, this is a really important one um, that, that maybe a lot of you aren't familiar with, but do you have in your system or in your, in your uh, in your, your uh, company, a system for callbacks. In other words, let's say that uh, one of your employees always does a certain thing, right? They, they're the ones that always, gosh, I don't know, uh, puts the purchase orders out with your vendors or make sure that, um, that all of your customers are receiving their bills, right? If, if you have bills that, are, that you're collecting from customers. Well, do you have a system for there's another employee, or maybe it's even you, that says, you know what, once a week, I'm going to call those back. I'm going to just call back everything you do. I'm just going to do a spot check, and I'm just going to make sure that nothing is, is breaking, right? Because what's amazing is, you remember last week, we talked about, about planning, and you may have laid out the perfect plan for, what, um, for how you're going to operate your business or how you're going to grow your business, but along the way, six months later, a year later, two years later, we all know what happens, right? Is you start to identify small different ways that something may go. And all of a sudden, this wonderful plan that you spent all this time writing out, it's actually a completely different plan. It's almost like playing that game of telephone when we were kids uh, and, and things change. And so sometimes it changes for the better. And you're like, hey, you know what? Let's write that process down because that process is way better. But sometimes it's like, you know what? There's a reason we don't do it that way. So let's make sure that we're cleaning it up. Right. This is what a tickler system does for you. It's just a reminder to go back in and make, make sure that things are happening on time and the way that you expect them to happen. Okay. All right. So computer systems, this is what we're all seeing nowadays, right? Certainly tremendous benefits over, over a paper system. It takes less space. It's faster. It's easier. Um, we all have internet connections now, generally speaking, right? Um, and, and we all know the benefits of computer. I don't, I don't have to tell you that. There's a, there's a million uh, software out there that, that handle each different piece of what your business may need, whether it's, again, things like Dropbox, things like uh, uh, Microsoft uh, has a, with Office, you get a bunch of storage uh, with Microsoft Office, uh, whether it's Google, right? Google has like, a, like, a, like an Office system and, and they let you store some stuff. Um, I use a iCloud, right, with the, with the Mac. Um, so there's, there's a lot of systems, some help you organize it, some are just storage rep repositories, but here's the important thing. And this is the, the one piece I wanna remind all of you are, uh, all of you of is, is really a couple things. One, make sure you have a backup, right? Just because something exists somewhere, make sure that you have that tickler system, right? That maybe, gosh, I don't know, maybe it's once a quarter, once a year, at a regular interval, you're going, you're grabbing all that files that are over in system A, and you're backing them up in system B, right? That you have somewhere where just in case something happens, you can recover your files. That's number one. Number two, okay, I know we all have very, very simple passwords because I like to remember simple passwords as well. 
Um, I, I, if, if, uh, if I wasn't married to my wife, I would tell her to improve her password, but because we're married, I just try to find other ways to keep it secure. Uh, but let's, let's make sure that you are creating passwords that are secure. Um, there's a lot of, there's, there's even password generators out there for you and there's password keeping tools, right? Um, I know that for those of you that, that have the Mac or, or I, the Apple products, there's something called the keychain where you can actually keep you know, more secure passwords. Um, there's things like LastPass. Uh, there, there's a lot of um, uh, password keepers. I think there's one that's actually called Keeper that actually keeps your passwords. So make sure that you're creating unique passwords uh, for all of these different systems that you're putting in important, vital information that can be hacked. And then we all are hearing the horror stories of the hacking that's going on. Make sure that you're keeping those in a safe place and you're securing them with a good password. And then I'm gonna add another step on that is make sure that you're using systems that require two-factor authentication. What does that mean? That means you go to the website, you put your username in, you put your password in, and then it says, great, before we let you in, we're going to send you a second factor of authentication. Maybe it's a text message, maybe it's an email, maybe it's a uh, um, some other sort of, of, of ring that says, great, you logged into the site, but now you also have to verify that it's you by doing the second thing. Um, and that's called two-factor authentication. So computer systems are fantastic, and there is a plethora of available um, uh, software out there. I've named off a bunch. But make sure, again, that your passwords are secure and that um, you're using two-factor authentication. We talked a little bit about cloud computing. Again, we, were, you know, we already talked, about, uh, talked a little bit about that. I'm going to add one more point that I almost forgot of is um, make sure that you are not clicking on, on links and emails. Uh, that's really where a lot of uh, folks are getting in trouble is that they're clicking on links and emails and the bad guys are getting into systems that way. Okay. Um, again, cloud computing, accounting, we all know of things like QuickBooks, right? That's probably the most popular one. Um, uh, certainly a lot, a lot of accountants like using it because they can access it pretty easily as well. Uh, you know, there's certainly a cost to it, but there are other systems out there. And it's really just working with your advisors to make sure that you're using the right, uh, the right system. Something that's going to work for both of you, right? Because remember, back to the beginning, it really doesn't matter what system you're using if you're not using it. So number one important is that we're actually using the system. Um, but again, the benefit of cloud computing is we're not upgrading software. We don't have to worry about data loss. Uh, we can access it from anywhere. Other benefit is we can share the information with colleagues, right? So file hosting, this is things like the Dropbox and share file, the, the Google drives, uh, Microsoft, uh, that sort of thing. Okay, uh, and uh, and again, there's free options. There's fee-based options. Usually, that's based on um, on uh, 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 size, how much you want to store. Okay, uh, but it's gonna it let you. You know, I've got a little something going on right behind the screen. I'm gonna just pause for one second, and uh, give me one second. While he pauses, Richard, I know you're answering feverishly a number of questions. Is there anything live that you think that has been recurring that we should ask really quickly so everyone hears the answer? I'd like to remind everyone, thank you, Hilda. Just would like to remind the audience that if you've submitted your information to AMPAC, we will send out confirmations at the end of this series that's when everyone will know that we have your information. Anything you submitted is held in a secured file with ANPAC. So if you sent it, we have it, as long as your email system did not reject it. And please bear in mind that checklist, make sure you're sending all of the documents. Someone asked, or several people had asked that they couldn't send the documents all at once. They had to send it in separate emails. That means you're probably not using the share file link that we provide for you. So please make sure you check the website for full instructions. Thanks, Hilda. Thank you, Omar. Absolutely. Thank you, guys. Uh, sorry. I, I, you know, we, we've all been working from home and sometimes uh, that, that's just the joy of, of uh, remote working, right? So thank you all for that quick reprieve. And I'm glad we were able to answer that question. Um, so again, when we're talking about cloud computing and file hosting, um, this is, again, this is replacing those accordion folders or file folders, those paper systems 
to store your documents, okay? And again, a lot of, lot of popular software out there, uh, whether it's uh, Dropbox, ShareFile, I'm just, I'm repeating some of these uh, because obviously it's not in the training. I just want to make sure that, that you all are, are, are catching some of these names so that you can go out and, and do a little bit of homework on them, see what's the right fit for your business, okay? All right, so business software, and again, this is all, again, going to be based on your business needs, um, but we're, we're all used to, or we all kind of grew up with, uh, you know, Microsoft Word, Excel, and you'd have to go to the Best Buy and buy the box, right, and, you know, um, uh, install it, you know, take out the CDs and install it in and all. Well, well today, you, you go to a website, you, you sign up, they give you a couple of weeks free trial, and all of a sudden, all this, this software is loaded up on, on your um on your computer and you can access it from anywhere. Um, so make sure you're thinking about what you need for your, for your business, uh, whether it's spreadsheets or email or, or you know, word processing or, or power, something like PowerPoint. There's a lot of options for you out there as well. Uh, you know, Microsoft isn't the only game in town any longer. Uh, Apple has a product, Google has a free product uh, that a lot of people use. Um, and then really that, that op those options continue on and on, okay? Other business softwares you may need. So this is again, beyond the basics, right? How are you tracking your inventory for those of you that actually have uh, inventory? Um, how about some of you who are in a little bit more of a service-based uh, uh, industry? Um, you know, so let's say the, uh, the salon or, or the, the barber uh, or the childcare, uh, you know, something along those lines. How are you tracking the schedules, right? And there's, there's, there's ways to do that. And, and there's a lot of places, a lot of software that can help you manage that. E-commerce. Um, some of you are selling on Amazon, for example, or, or you're selling on eBay, uh, or maybe you have a little storefront and then you're selling your product uh, through your website as well. Uh, there's a lot of, lot of great software out there that will help you manage that, um, uh, th that uh, uh, your inventory, help you manage those orders, uh, making sure that you're getting the, you know, all the postage right, the, the shipping costs right, and that it's, go, it's all going to the right place, okay? Uh, do you need other things to think about? Do you need multiple users? Um, do you need to be able to access it from anywhere, uh, you know, anywhere in the world? Um, is there something that's specific to your industry, right? So, so there's a lot of times where, you know, I, know I have a lot of customers who, who say, hey, you know, we started on something like QuickBooks, right? QuickBooks is, is really well known, but you know what, for our industry, product X is actually the right one for us because QuickBooks doesn't allow us to do certain things. So talk to some folks that are in your industry and see what kind of software they're using uh, because you may find that there's better options for you, sometimes cheaper, sometimes it's more expensive, but it actually ends up saving you money because you're getting better information from it. And it's, and it's something that's potentially uh, uh, quicker or easier or it's producing better reporting for you. So these are some of the things that you want to think about uh, when you're going through through. Um, email, hopefully I don't have to spend too much time on email. Uh, that's just the way we all communicate nowadays, whether it's email or, or, or text messages. So uh, hopefully this is something I can, I can kind of breeze through really quickly. Uh, but if not, uh, Google uh, uh, Gmail, for example, free email service, that's something you can use. So, uh, but I'm, I'm, I'm guessing most of you, if you're handling the other software, you're probably getting email on track as well. Okay. And then we've talked a lot about, about accounting um, and the different options that we have there. You know, and the really, again, the key with, with accounting is, is I would say it's a, it's a couple of things. It's one, does it meet your specific industry's needs, right? Something like QuickBooks covers, I, gosh, I'm, I'm making up a number here, but let's say it covers 90% of the businesses out there, right? But, for, but if you're one of the 10%, is there a better option for you? Or is it, you know, are you growing at a pace where something like QuickBooks doesn't allow you to get into the, the into the, the deeper reporting that you need to be able to see to make wise decisions? So should you look at, at somewhere at, at something else? And this is, a, this is a conversation you're going to want to have with your accountants uh, to make sure that uh, that you're using the right uh, the right software, right? Because if you can get the, the, the information entered in properly without errors, in an organized fashion, then you're gonna get better results. And that's something that you can make decisions on uh, um, uh, more effectively, right? And ultimately save you, save you money and help you grow your business, okay?
So again, this is another discussion point that we have uh, that we have here. So this is something else. Th you know, something else to think about in your notes is um, what kind of accounting system are you using? Uh, can can you describe it? Right. Some of you may say, well, yeah, I have this thing, and you know, uh, I have somebody that just puts the numbers in in there for for me. Um, great. Can you can you kind of describe that and and think about it because. You know, when, when you're talking about something like an accounting system, it really should be serving you as the business owner, right? And if you can't describe what's happening, you're just saying, hey, I'm just doing something because that's what my CPA requires me to do so that I can file my taxes, you know, at the end of the year. It's not really giving you, or it's probably not giving you great information in that case, right? So start by describing it. Maybe think about then once you've described it, what are some of the things that you'd like to see out of it? Maybe that's something that that's, uh, you can take a training course to, uh, to learn how to use better. Maybe it's uh, an add-on that you can add into the, into the, uh, the product. Um, maybe it's something that you can see, uh, see a training with, uh, whether it's um, uh, a, a tutorial that the product itself offers, whether it's YouTube, YouTube, YouTube you'd be surprised at the number of, of trainings on YouTube, right? I've, I've learned like fac fancy uh, Excel tricks, Microsoft Excel tricks. Because I, I would wonder, I was like, you know, gosh, there's got to be a faster way to do this. And I would just go type in some search on YouTube and all of a sudden I'm watching a training on how to use Excel better, right? So th there's, a, there's a plethora of, of trainings available out on YouTube. And then kind of beyond the online, there's all of your resource partners, right? Ampac talked about the entrepreneurial ecosystem where the majority of these resource partners are actually going to be in-house. They're actually going to be present there. Uh, in the building in Ontario, uh, which um, uh, there's a grand opening coming up soon, I, I heard this morning. So keep an eye out for that, uh, for when that, that, uh, that building is going to be available to you. But there's going to be mentors from SCORE, from the Small Business Development Center, um, and then some other ones that I'm not sure if these are going to be there, but Veterans Business Outreach or Women's Business Center. There's, there's a, a lot of great resources out there that can help you um, help you better utilize your tools, uh, your accounting tools, uh, or, or really any of any of your software. Um, and then I've mentioned this a couple of times. Make sure you're talking to your accountants, those, those are your bookkeepers, right? Because a lot of times, you know, and you asking questions, say, you know, I got, you know, well, can we do this? Or is there a better way to do this? A lot of times those folks, because they're dealing with multiple businesses, they can, they can say, you know what, there, there is actually a better way to do it. Let's, let's work on that. And maybe that's a process that you have to go back to last week and say, okay, we're going to plan to create a new process in our business, but that new process is going to help us uh, uh, grow faster, grow more efficiently, or grow wiser, right? So make sure you're tapping into your, your, to all of your resources. And okay, Omar, so, I'll just, yes. I'll just emphasize Perfect. again, just as you said, in mm -hmm. our uh, entrepreneur ecosystem, we will have partners and speakers from all of those disciplines, all of those SBA partners that you mentioned will be part of our, bis our uh, ecosystem or easily accessible as well as accountants and bookkeepers and um, local colleges and universities. So that's, um, we want this center to be really a resource for small businesses. So thank you. Yeah, absolutely. So, so there you go. So there's even going to be more resources there than I thought. Uh oh, I, I got a, I got a little crazy with the wheel there. Okay, so next we're going to the next slide. So, so make sure you're you're taking advantage of that and you're getting that information about what Ampac is doing uh, through the app, right? Because I think I think uh, Brian mentioned that's that's going to be your your best place to to keep an eye on things. Make sure you're on email lists and all that sort of thing, so you can uh, see when those resources are available. Okay, record keeping. So before I, I talk about this slide, um, I'm just going to go, I'm going to share, this was something that I got from a good friend of mine who's a CPA, um, who gave me the, the, this information. Um, and so before you put any of this into practice, make sure you're talking to your advisors. Um, uh, um, make sure, just make sure you're talking to your advisors, but I'm just going to try to give you some general rules of thumb or some, some, uh, some kind of high level items. Okay. For those of you in the room that are corporations, so these are your LLCs, your S corps or your C corps. Okay. 
The most important thing that you want to remember if you're a corporation is to that you have to maintain your corporate veil. In other words, when you're a corporation, you are putting up a wall between you as an individual and your business. Okay? They call that the corporate veil. How do you maintain that? Well, there's two ways, really. One, you do not commingle funds. In other words, if, the, if a dollar came into your business, that dollar is not yours. You've got to reach out and, and pull it out, right? So make sure you're not spending money on personal items. Those should be, uh, should be left to spend money on the business items. Um, th the other way to do that is, and this should be, for Brian, remind me for the next, the next PowerPoint, let's add this uh, point. Make sure that you are keeping your annual uh, your annual meeting minutes. That you're actually having an annual meeting uh, annual minute. Uh, oh, excuse me. That you're ha having the annual meeting and that you're keeping those minutes. There are online uh, services that will do that for you or help you to remind you to do it and help you to make sure that that those things are are happening. Some that stuff does exist or. Um, local smaller law firms will help you do that, right? In both cases, you're going to pay a fee, but really what you're doing is it's almost, I think of it like, this, this is just the way I think of it is I'm paying insurance just in case someday um, uh, something goes wrong. I can go back and say, no, 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 you know, Mr. Judge or, or uh, Miss IRS person. Uh, no, I have maintained my corporate bail. See, I've got this wall up and, and, what happens in the business stays in the business and what happens to me personally stays personal, okay? Other good practice, make sure you're paying yourself a salary. I, I, I see quite a few folks who don't pay themselves a salary out of their corporation and say that they take distributions. Um, there, there's tax reasons for that, I get it. But again, we're, we're trying to grow a healthy business and, and keep ourselves out of liability and out of trouble. Uh, a great way to do that is to be, pay yourself a salary and make sure you're checking those boxes for uh, for the IRS in this case. And, and the state of California, the state of California is very employee friend, friendly. And so um, you, you get to be the employee in that case. So just make sure you're doing that. And then final point for corporations is your advisors really matter. Okay? If you are a corporation, make sure that you've got, um, you know, you've got a place to go to for legal advice, for accounting advice, uh, if you have employees, HR advice or, or the employment attorney type folks, um, but insurance, right, things like that, those, are, those things really start to matter, uh, really in all businesses, but uh, particularly in a corporation, because uh, just by its nature, you, you, you're, you know, uh, um, you think you have protection, but if you're not maintaining some of these things, it's very easy for someone that's coming after you, right, so the, you know, the bad guys, right, to come after you and, and they can uh, go after you personally, even though you thought you had that corporate protection. Okay, so that's that's really important there on the corporation side. Okay, um, sole props. Okay, sole proprietorship. Let's talk about record keeping for the sole props here. Okay, very important. There is no corporate veil in a sole proper uh, proprietorship. You are the business. The business is you. Vice versa, all the way around. It's all one thing. Okay. Um, and so that can be that can be great because there's lower cost, there's lower um, uh, uh, diligence on on record keeping. It's actually okay to commingle funds, right? Because you are you and the business are all one thing, but keep records. We're going to talk about that in just a second. Uh, but it can also be bad because now you're exposed to liability. Okay, and so we're going to talk about for those of you that are sole props, what are some of the things that would cause you to become a corporation? But before we get to there, I'm going to talk about this commingling of funds. This is something I had no idea of. So this is very important. Again, came from a CPA, go talk to your CPA uh, before you take any action on any of this. What he mentioned to me was that um, there's a high risk of IRS audit for those of you that are that are, are sole proprietors. In fact, I think well over 70% of, of audits that happen are for sole props. And usually what they're looking at is they're looking at the things that you are writing off for meals and entertainment, your mileage, and your travel, okay? And here's the reason why, right? So a lot of you might think, well, why aren't they auditing the, you know, the big companies, right? Why aren't they, you know, they, those are the, the, the guys that are, are, uh, that are doing things wrong. Here's the reason why, because the IRS can go and say, oh, here's this sole prop. I bet you they haven't done a good job of what have we been talking today, record keeping. 
I'm going to put a 39 cent stamp on a letter to that sole prop and say, hey, prove to me that you actually drove the 10,000 miles for your business uh, that you did last year, right? Most people are going to look at that and say, ooh, I actually didn't keep track of my mileage. And they're going to say, oh, no, 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 I'm sorry, IRS. Yeah, what's the, that penalty again? Uh, and then they're going to try to negotiate that penalty and they're going to cut a check and it cost the IRS 39 cents. And all of a sudden they just picked up some additional tax revenue, okay? So especially for those of you that are sole props, make sure these are all legitimate business expenses. Make sure you're doing a good job of, of keeping track of those. So for, for things like meals, uh, you're keeping a copy of the receipt. You're, you're writing down what you did with it. Maybe even you know, taking a picture of the receipt and holding on onto it. For things like mileage, download a mileage app on your phone. Uh, it, they're, they're, they're inexpensive. They're really easy to use. Um, the only thing you have to remember is to actually use it. You just you hit a button, you say, I'm driving now, and it'll keep track of the mileage for you. And then you can say what it is that you're driving for. Uh, and then if you get one of those scary letters from the IRS, you say, oh, no, 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 here's my app and here's my records. Here you go. I, yep, I drove every one of those miles for, for the business. And they leave you alone, okay? Uh, well, in theory. But make sure you're talking to your CPA about this. And again, it goes back to what we've been talking about. Make sure you're keeping records of all those things. And again, I'm just highlighting those kind of three key focuses uh, that the IRS has because it's just this is kind of common sense, right? What, what's going to give me the best return uh, uh, for the least amount of work, okay? All right, so here's a couple of best practices for uh, the sole, sole props out there. Uh, if you're for managing cash, number one, okay? Um, and again, this is just best practice, it's just a recommendation. Go to your city, file a fictitious business name statement or something equivalent to it, okay? So something that allows you, remember again, sole prop business, you're one, we're going to create a little bit of separation by saying, no, no, no but I'm doing business under Omar Morel, uh, you know, uh, doing business as, uh, you know, Omar's ice cream or something like that, right? We're going to create a name for our business. Uh, and that's usually done with a fictitious business name statement, or your city may have some other uh, uh, equivalent. It's also known as a DBA, doing business as, okay? Once you have that DBA, you can now go to the IRS and you can get an EIN, an employer identification number. It's kind of, I think of it like a social security number, but for your business, right? Another way to think of it is a, uh, uh, some people call it a TIN, uh, the taxpayer ID number, okay? Uh, it's, just a, it's just a way that you're gonna pay taxes under a certain, uh, under that number instead of under your social security number, okay? Now that you have a fictitious business name statement and you have a tax ID, you can create a separate bank account. You can walk into, walk into most banks, um, that, into a retail branch. You can set up a business banking account. Uh, there's a lot of internet banks even that, that let you do this. Um, you set up a bank. They all have different fees, all different services. Find the right one for you. And you set up a separate bank account for that business. So now there's a way that even though you're allowed to commingle funds, it's a lot easier to keep the record because now you have a separate bank account where only the business transactions happen. Okay. Uh, all right. So that's how that's uh, kind of the, the best practice advice on managing cash. Okay. Prepaying taxes. Nobody wants to pay taxes. I get it. But why and how often should we prepay taxes? Again, this is from a friend of mine, check with your CPA before you put any of this into, into action. What he said is he always asked his, his sole proprietorship, proprietors, are you a spender or are you a saver? Kind of be honest with yourself, maybe even write, write down in a note for the sole props out there, write down right now, am I a spender or am I a saver, okay? For those of you that wrote spender, what he recommends is every quarter pay 10% of your revenue, just kind of set it and forget it. Just you know, if you sold $1,000 that month, take 100 bucks and send it off to the IRS once a quarter, okay? Um, and the reason for that is because if by nature you're a spender, then you don't want to be at the end of the year or next year all of a sudden scrapping and trying to figure out, oh, gosh, now I owe the, I owe the, the, the IRS, you know, you know, I don't know, $10,000 of taxes that I haven't been kind of prepaying along the way. Not to mention that that $10,000 bill suddenly has late penalties and it has interest that's accruing because you didn't pay it on time, okay? So our, be honest with y'all, hey, I'm a spender. Here's an easy way. Your 
percentage may be a little different once you talk to your CPA, but for those of you who just want a simple system, 10% of the revenue of the sales gets sent quarterly. Are you a saver? Okay, You're leaving the money in the bank account. What he recommends is your cash is probably better used elsewhere, right? It could be, it could be sitting in a high interest rate account, um, which there's not very many of right now, but theoretically it could. It, you know, you, you can find other places. You could be reinvesting it in your business. You can be doing a lot of other things with that cash. So what he recommends to, to those folks is after the third quarter or as the end of the fourth quarter is approaching, right? So, so kind of we're September 30th right now. So kind of like for those of you that are, are savers in this bucket, maybe like next week or sometime in December, you're going to say, I think I'm going to end up showing about X dollars of net income. Like, in other words, this is how much I think I'm going to have to pay taxes on. 20% go, goes off in prepaid taxes, five to the state, 15 to the, uh, to the IRS. Okay. In both of these cases, you're more likely to avoid penalty. You're more likely to avoid interest and you're more likely to get a refund, which, you know, uh, um, that's a whole separate finance conversation about refunds. But for now, let's just, let's just assume that refunds are, are a good thing. Okay. So, be honest with yourself, spender or saver, and then that's a good rule of thumb. Write it down, check with your CPA uh, before you put any of that into action. All right. And we have about, uh, we're right at two o'clock, oh. 201. So cool. do you want to try and get yes, through Yes, last slide. Quickly? Okay. Yes, la last slide. So um, should you convert to, to a corp? Um, it's, there's three reasons you would do it. It's strategic, right? You're trying to raise capital. You have future growth growth plans. There's maybe there's a reason there that you should convert to a corp. Number two, it's a legal reason. Maybe you're in a highly litigious industry. Uh, maybe you're holding real estate in the LLC in, in in a corporation, and you want to be able to separate that real estate so that if you ever got sued, uh, you're limiting your liability. That's that's what LLC means. Um, there's a legal reason, and then the final reason is a revenue or cost decision. Um, so again. Corporations, remember we talked about earlier, there's more record keeping, there's minimum tax required. So by its nature, it's more expensive, okay? So again, my buddy's rule of thumb is usually 60 to 80,000 of revenue. They start talking about converting uh, to a corporation of some kind, uh, but your CPA and your particular business may be different, okay? And then my, actually, my actual final slide is, whatever you're gonna do, start now, don't delay. Um, um, yeah, record keeping, it's, it's so important to the health of your business, get it started right away. And so with that, I'm handing it back to Ms. Kennedy. Thank you so much, Omar. I know that was a lot to get through. Thank you all for um, staying on. And uh, we as lenders work with so many small businesses who don't have these principles down which is why we thought it very important to bring this to you in this opportunity to get educational training as well as participate in this competitive grant. And so what you're going to receive, if you did not pull it down from the chat, there's a participant guide with all of this information that we covered in the webinar that you're going to receive electronically. You're also going to receive the, the form polling what you learned from this session and giving you the opportunity to uh, document what you learned and how you're going to apply the information used from this session. And then we'll have several reminders. A lot of people asked about going, uh, submitting their applications. Please go forward, submit your complete application. We included a tip in the uh, information that we sent out. If for some reason, because of the volume of questions that we're getting about applications, if for some reason you can't complete a certain section of the application, include a note in your application as to why you can't submit that section of the application. We will take that into consideration in the reviewing and scoring process um, to determine that your application is complete. Don't leave it blank. Don't 
um, and if you put in a, just note why you put not applicable, uh, but otherwise submit a complete application. Incomplete applications cannot be considered. You again will receive a copy of this, um, a copy of the participant guide. You're gonna receive this webinar recording and you're gonna receive some tools and tips for completing your application. Please do complete your full application and then you will hear from us once all the applications are in and we're in the review process. Uh, I wanna to turn to Richard and Brian to see if I missed ever anything before we thank you so much for attending. Is there anything else we should um, be reminding the participants other than utter gratitude for this opportunity to um, participate in this educational training and um, anything else, Richard? I would just say to everyone, as you have already said, Hilda, you welcome them, excuse me, you thank them for attending. Don't forget Omar and AMPAC will be, I'm sorry, American Business Bank and Impact Business Capital will be back next week. Please make sure you join us. This information is, as they say on TV, priceless. Thanks, Helen. Thank you very much. And again, thank you, American Business Bank, for this generous investment in small businesses and in the education of small businesses through this limited funds, competitive grant process, but an endless um, opportunity to get educated. Thank you again for attending.